Hello everybody, and welcome back to episode number three of Home of the Brave. Hope you're happy and healthy, and as you can see on my first page here, we are looking for a free agent in the catcher position. So I'm looking particularly at Evan Gaddis, and the reason for that is because if you saw the end of last episode, you'll notice that I'm way below 500, nine games back. This actually is one of the most frightening positions I've ever been in, in out of the park baseball in any rendition of the game. And the reason is not necessarily because of the pitching. The pitching has been okay. Fulton Evich is a little bit above uh, his ERA's balloon to 4.95, but it was actually up near 7 early in the season, so it's come back down. And Sean Newcomb is a call up from AAA, and he's performed pretty well so far. I mean, 4.33 is not great, but it's not terrible. I am going to look to trade Shane Green here pretty quickly. Chad Sabotka, he is also a AAA call-up who I am hoping to send back down quite soon. And outside of that, the pitching's been okay. It's been my batting. And Tyler Flowers batting 169. He does have 87 defense, which is part of the reason why my pitching staff has done so well. But 169 is just like so, so bad. So he's got to go. And I said that at the start of the year that I would be looking to deal him anyways because he's on an expiring contract, and you know that I don't like those. Travis Darno will be the replacement. I just need a backup catcher. So I look through my roster, and in single uh, single A, I've got Sean Langlaire's, and or sorry, his name is uh, Shea Langlaire's. And in double A, I have William Contreras. Unfortunately, in double A, if you can just see the stat card there, Contreras is batting 188 almost 300 on base percentage but that's probably not good enough for the majors and his contact and power isn't quite developing quick enough so I am going to leave him down in in double A and instead I'm going to probably deal flowers and then pick up a backup catcher in his stead. If you look down the lineup as well here obviously we've talked about Freddie Freeman batting 244 not good enough. Ozzy Albies batting 210, like really not good enough. Johan Camargo, he is batting better than what he did last season, so can't complain about that. Hechevarria has been okay as well. Dansby Swanson only batting 200, so he's just sort of, I might even send him down. Obviously, he's been in the majors for like four or five seasons already, so he might be out of option seasons, option years rather. Uh, Adam Duvall, he's batting quite well. Marcelo Zuna, I mean, last season he, he was batting 241. He's batting 240 this season. I'm just hoping he picks up a couple more home runs because he needs to in his position as second or third in the in the order. Ender and Ciarte, I looked at potential deals for him because obviously I have, um, I think it's Colin Patch, who's down in the minors, and he's one of my, sorry, Christian Patch. He's one of my potential MLB stars of the future unfortunately like his his batting stats just aren't there yet his contact quite low his power is quite low his eyes not good enough he does have a hundred defense out of a hundred so that's very good but I'm I just don't think he's quite ready to get the call up especially especially when Ender and Ciarte is batting 266 if you look here we also have Ronald Acuna Jr. who's batting 215 so between him and Ozzy Albies just simply simply put it's not good enough and that's a major concern for me moving forwards is like I can't deal these guys they're way too young they're potential stars of the MLB uh, Freddie Freeman who I have to sign to a new contract and like I said in the last episode I'm, I'm so scared of opening up the contract negotiation with Freddie Freeman because he's gonna want so much money he's already 30 years old he does have one more year after this in his contract so I might just hold on to him and then attempt to deal him next season I don't really have any first base pros first baseman prospects anywhere down the pipeline so it's a little bit concerning on that front we'll just sort of play it by beer see how we go and um, the first thing I'm going to do is make some deals though so obviously we got in a new uh, hitting coach or at least we sent him an offer in the last episode and now I'm just gonna kind of go through and see if I can get any offers on these players here so let's shop around Tyler flowers and see what we can get I'd also be curious to see if we potentially throw in another player like a pitcher but sometimes just the one for one is the better way to do it because the fact that they're a little bit cheaper <coughs> in the one for one deal and some some teams are looking to offload contracts so let's see if we can potentially find like a I don't know, maybe another starting pitcher that could be of use. 
obviously a relief pitcher um, is only useful if they've got good value and then a position player if we can find somebody that is a good prospect potentially or at least a good contract so that's sort of what I'm looking for so Cal Quantrill is somebody who's quite interesting his stuff isn't quite there yet he does have five pitches which is always quite good he's considered a team leader that's also good do I really need another starting pitcher prospect though maybe not so that's something that I have to keep in mind Chris Archer is an interesting option here he does have two years left and a team opt-out with a zero dollar buyout let's see here obviously we we're looking at Cole Tucker earlier in the season but I'm not so sold on him anymore I think that Chris Archer might be the best return Tyler Wade he plays just everywhere on the field but I'm not sure if he'd really cut it especially a guy that's batting less than 200 this year somebody under the Mendoza line is probably not a value pickup in truth Salvador Perez obviously a better catcher in terms of his um, pedigree but I don't think with 13 million dollars a year that he's really worth it anymore so what do we do I think that Chris Archer is the best offer and he does have one more extra year in his contract so I can deal him next year if I need to or in the offseason it would just be kind of like a stopgap for the time being so let's see if we can um, and then, oh, well, there is Cliff Fraser, but I really don't need a right fielder, especially with Ar Acuna Jr. So let's just leave that and see if we can pick up Chris Archer and maybe even get them to throw in a prospect some somewhere. And for those of you that are new to Out of the Park Baseball, that hashtag just means they're Rule 5 eligible. The asterisk means that they are on the 40-man roster of the team. So if you're looking to pick up a steal... What I like to do is click prospects in the drop down menu, search for the highest potential, and then look through the names that have the hashtag next to them because that means they're not actually on their 40 man roster. And sometimes they'll be looking to get rid of those players because they don't have the room to add them in the future. So let's look for positional depth. We already have a good center fielder, so that's not necessarily a position we want to fill. Starting pitchers always have value, but sometimes they're so valuable the team doesn't want to give them up. We can fit in a shortstop just like that. They don't want to do it. Um, you know, a closer, sometimes these relief pitchers have a little bit less value because they're so bountiful, plentiful. They don't want to do any of the starting pitchers, which I can understand. I wouldn't want to deal a starting pitcher myself. Luis Escobar. Okay, so they're okay with that. And I am too. Like, if I can get another guy who's a little bit higher rated, actually quite highly rated by the uh, OSA which is the central scouting for Tyler Flowers I mean let's do it why not we've shipped Flowers off to Pittsburgh and in return we've got Chris Archer and the fans like that one so let's make sure he's in waivers and DFA so let's make sure he's on the 40 man roster stick him on the active roster we can then demote Sean Newcomb down to AAA and now we got to look for a catcher, which for the just for the first couple games, I'm going to just call up a, another catcher. And we will call up, let's call up Contreras because he is honestly, well, let's see. This is Hector Sanchez. Well, he's batting 310, which is quite good, actually. Let's just call up Hector Sanchez for a couple of games. And then we can always move William Contreras up if he's not doing the job. And in the meantime... I'm also going to dish off. I should have actually done this before moving Hector Sanchez to the Major League roster, but that's okay. Let's see. Where is he? Let's see if we can deal Shane Green. Um, oh, I don't have the shop around because I've already been shopping today. And we can see the draft pool. It's fine. And the home page. Sorry, my uh, free agent page. Let's just flick over to there and go to catcher and then see that Evan Gaddis, he probably just wants a minor league. Yeah, with a signing bonus of 75k, which we'll offer to him. And then hopefully he gets back to us. <clears throat> oh, Mark Melanson is out with forearm inflammation for three to four months. So 
He's off the roster for basically the rest of the season with AJ Minter. And I believe that he is on an expiring contract, so that's a bit of a shame because we now won't be able to deal him. Is that right? Am I right? Yes, I am. So let's put him on the 60-day IL. So he'll be off the roster then. And I think that we actually save some money by doing that as well. So that frees up some money in the future, which is good. And we'll finish today, sort of set the rosters. And there we go. So Tom Bernaski, who we tried to offer a contract to in the last episode, has signed, as does Evan Gaddis. So we'll move Evan Gaddis up to the majors. We'll move our friend that we just brought up, Hector Sanchez, back down to the minors. Oh, of course, and he's on a uh, major league contract with option years, so I now have to wave him and then designate. There we go. And in the meantime, let's see, waivers and DFA. There should be... Oh, no, he won't be on the major leagues because Evan Gaddis is... Where is he? He's not on a major league deal, so therefore he won't be necessarily on DFA. And of course I can't find him, so I'm going to have to go into this where he's he is playing AAA. I don't know why I couldn't find him, but let's move him up to the Major League team. Promote to Atlanta. Perfect. There we go. So we've lessened that uh, contract uh, in, the, in that position. And let's see if we can deal Shane Green now. All right, what can we get? Zach Britton, that's an interesting option. Probably too much of a contract though. Too large of a contract for me, for my liking. Randall Grichuk, four years left on a big contract if I remember right. Yeah, it gets smaller every season, but I'm not interested in that. Will Harris, okay, so there's not a whole lot of interest. Prugnet Odor, that's a big contract. Might be worth just getting rid of this guy for something cheap if we can. We'll see though. Let's see what I get offered here. Eleven mil every year for the next two years. He's got a four point three eight. That doesn't help me. Zach Britton does have a one point four two ERA. That's kind of interesting, but um, it's quite an expensive contract. Let's see, Eddie Rosario, that's an interesting option. Eddie Rosario's batting 271. He's only 7.8. He's on arbitration as well. So that's not a bad offer there. Who's our left fielder right now? We have Duvall and Osuna, who's on an, an expiring deal. I wonder if we should dish Osuna and pick up Eddie Rosario. He slowly decreased his average over the past few seasons, but 30 home runs a season. Well, he's only had two this year. That would be, maybe that's the red herring that we, you know, the average is 271. Oh, it's not so bad, but two home runs means that he's not hitting the ball as well this season. That would be a little bit worrying. Especially as we have Duvall, who's playing all right. Um, there's Ryan Braun, who's batting 478 right now. Oh my goodness, he's almost batting 500 at at 46 plate appearance. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, his contract. Well, he does have a team opt out. Now that'd be an interesting. Like this guy's batting 500 right now. It's obviously not to. Uh, it's not going to stay there. But 500 is. <laughs> interesting. Duvall has an option here. <laughs> Not that I want to use it. I think he does anyways. No, he's got 10 years as a professional. No, yeah, he definitely doesn't have an option here. What am I thinking? I mean, what would you guys do? I, I would like to know in the comments below who you'd be. You've seen up and down the list who my options are. Who would you trade Shane Green for? I, I'm tempted to do Eddie Rosario. He's kind of the best option on the list. He's fairly cheap. You know, he's, he's in arbitration, so that means that I can go ahead and deal Duvall or someone like that. You know? Or even deal Osuna. I wonder what he would get. Let's see. Let's shop him around. 
expiring contract always good to pick up something in return for an expiring contract so I, what we could do <laughs> is get our Nolas Chapman obviously big contract but probably the best closer in the game for at least a couple more seasons then trade at one of our relief pitchers Shane Green so we replace that relief pitcher with Arnold Chapman, and then we we dish off Marcelo Zuna in return for sorry we we dish off our Ozuna in return for the relief pitcher, and then when we dish our relief pitcher for our left fielder, it's kind of like a swap in that sense. And you never know, like that could work out. But then we obviously lose our day-to-day -day left fielder. We'd have to be using Rosario, which is a bit of a downgrade at that position. Although he is batting 270, so he's, you know, and similar amount of home runs because Ozuna's only at four. Sorry, he's got seven now, so he must be heating up in the last game or two. Hmm. What would you guys do? Would you trade Ozuna for Chapman, get some team-controlled years? I think I might do it, actually, now that I'm thinking about it because Ozuna, yes, he's batted a little bit better recently. He's fairly consistent. In fact, he might be the most consistent player on my team, but he's out of his contract this year. Do we regret having a... 16 million dollar relief pitcher part of me thinks yes <laughs> to be honest I never ever give relief pitchers this much money ever and I think for good reason if I can get a good prospect for this I'll do it let's see let's see I mean, we'd be really rinsing them for a couple prospects here. Sanchez. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it for Filiar Sanchez. And we might even try to get a couple more prospects out of them here. Why not? Take them for everything they got. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm getting Chap Ozuna for Chapman. That's the big part of the deal. And then I'm trading two of my prospects who aren't probably ever going to make it for a couple of guys that could. They're not great. But they're definitely serviceable. Okay, let's pull the trigger. Ozuna for Chapman. And there's a little achievement unlocked as well. And then we're going to go ahead and deal green. Where is it? Green... For Rosario and hopefully some prospects as well Okay, uh, I think that might be it. Let's see if they take this third baseman here. Starting pitcher, starting pitcher, starting pitcher. Yeah, no thanks. Okay. I, I like this deal. I like that deal. Okay, so we've just significantly altered our lineup. And I think for good reason. Let's finish today. And take a look at what our lineup looks like now. Okay, so we got Mike Soroka, Max Fried, Chris Archer, Mike Fultnevich, and Bryce Wilson. That's a pretty decent starting pitching rotation. Arnold's Chapman, Will Smith. Good one-two punch. And Chad Sabotka is the only question mark, really, in this rotation. Obviously, Darren O'Day as well. I mean, would anybody want him? see so we will put Darno in as catcher Evan Gaddis as the utility player for well let's go if starter tired left field we want Rosario playing and Duvall should be playing if the starters tired okay something like that okay hopefully that changes things up a little bit here Oh, you can change the ticket price in mid-season now? I didn't know that. Interesting. Okay. 
Well, we're going to have to see if we can claw our way back here. Because uh, things have, obviously, if you look at the, at the standings here, the NL East is very difficult. There's no, there's just no denying how tough the NL East is. But we're going to have to find a way to claw back into the playoff positions. And I think that, I mean, our roster should be good enough. It really should be. I know the Phillies have a decent roster. Obviously, the National Defending Champions. The Mets, also very good young roster. But I don't see how, you know, we, we, there's got to be a way for us to claw all the way back. Cole Hamill should be back any day now. That's good. Mark Melanson's done for the season. And Nick Markakis, I'm just going to keep, I think. This might be the time to trade Hechevarria because he's batting so well. I don't know what kind of contract he, he's going to want, but if we can get a good return on him, I'll deal him as well at some point before the trade deadline. We'll just sort of have to see how that plays out. That's a pretty good prospect right there. <laughs> he keeps coming up, though. It's almost like uh, they don't like him or something. Anyways, we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see where this series can go. Home of the Braves. Another series on Millennial Gaming. Appreciate you stopping by. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.